Hi guys! In this video I will show you how to remove a heavy shadow caused by the use of a flash gun. Let's get started! Okay, so we got this wedding photo which was sent to me by a photographer Philip MacDonald. He asked me if it would be possible to remove the shadow around the groom which was caused by a flash gun as the natural light was fading fast. Well, I have good news for you! Yes, we can certainly do that! Let's see what we got here. So we have this shadow behind the groom. We also have this shadow between the couple here and there. We also have a tiny shadow on the bride's hair. And as you can see, we also have these shadows on the wooden structure here. So if we are going to remove this shadow around our subjects, it will also make sense to remove those shadows as well. Let's start with duplicating the background layer. So we have a backup if needed, and I could show you the before and after later. So we go to background layer, control J or command J if you're using a Mac. Next, we need to make a really good selection of our subjects as it's going to be crucial in our process. We go to quick selection tool, which is right here. We click on it and we have an option select subject. You can also access it from select and you have the option subject here. So let's click it. And as you can see, it did a decent job selecting our subjects, but of course we need to refine it. So let's click this minus uh, select quick selection tool and let's just select the excess. All right, we don't need it here. That's good. And we also need to select this wooden structure here. So, oh, that's too much. Okay, that's good. That's good, that's good. Okay, brilliant. And we refine it here a little bit. And let's add this, 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 and that. We also want to select this part as it is affected by a shadow. And we select it till the very top. There we go. Let's put it on another layer. So we press Command or Control if you are on a PC. J. Brilliant! Now, when we have our selection on another layer, let's click the one beneath that, which is in our case layer 1, and we go to Filter liquify and essentially what we are going to do is we are going to push in the shadows so that they disappear this way and we push them make the brush a little bit bigger and let's push them all the way as much as we can. Let's push them here. You want to follow along the lines. As you can see, there is a line here with the um, with the wood. So we need to follow this. And let's push it. Oops. Okay. Let's push it here as well. This one go up and to the side. bigger, not so big, like this. There we go. Always following the lines. There 
we go. Let's push this little shadow as well. There we go. Okay, we can always use the reconstruct tool here if we want to revert it to the original a bit. Okay, brilliant. There we go, let's push the shadow all the way out. We want to create as much space without the shadow as possible within the boundaries of our new selection, which you will see in a sec how it look like. follow the lines. I mean if you have a backdrop which has lines on it so you need to follow them if you are pushing anything in or out. For this one I will just go I will just go up. Yes, for this part, let's just go up a bit. Okay. That would be good. I know they look a, <laughs> a bit distorted, but um, wait for the results. Wait to see what it does. So we can see what the effect would be. Okay, we don't have any shadow here, so that's good. All the shadows are removed, I suppose. So let's click OK. Okay, so this is what we did. Before and after. So as you can see, the shadows are gone, but there are few problems in the backdrop which we need to fix. We have this part of the image, which is obviously looking very stretched. We have this part, which we need to match the color. And we also have this part here, which just have to have um, lightness match to this level. So let's fix this part first. As you can see, this one looks very stretched, but if you look on the other side, this one looks very decent. So what we are going to do is we're going to take our lasso tool, set the feather to 14 pixels, that would be good, I think, and we just make a selection. Oh, sorry. Sorry, no, we need to go to layer one because we are going on a we are working on a, on our backdrop, not on our subjects, obviously. Yes, but still, let's copy this part of the image. Which looks okay. Brilliant. Let's duplicate it, control J. 
and with the menu edit we go to transform transform flip sorry flip horizontal and what we are going to do is we are going to put it on the other side let's do transform which is ctrl and t and let's rotate it to match what we have here let's rotate it a bit more fantastic that looks good to me so i'm clicking accept here but it's darker than this side so what we are going to do is we're going to choose adjustments hue saturation let's click this little um square here so that it only affects this layer and let's put our lightness up just like about three plus three brilliant what we can do is we can uh, erase a little bit i'm using eraser because i'm pretty much confident in my actions but if you want you can press the little square here and just mask it out so that you can always use it non-destructively so yeah my eraser is on flow for percent so it's going to be very delicate i just erase what we don't need fab um okay what else do we need fixing we need to fix oh yes this discoloration so again let's go to layer one and let's choose maybe another layer so create a new layer this little square here and basically let's put this layer into color mode because we are going to affect the color only right so let's take our brush tool let's say soft round under the general brushes opacity 100 flow let's go with maybe five percent so that it's quicker and let's sample the color with the eyedropper tool so we need the color of the backdrop obviously so let's sample that and let's start painting yeah okay brilliant the color is matched now what else do we need oh yeah we can see that the backdrop is warped here between between the couple what we can do is probably we can uh take this portion and just or maybe this part is very good so let's let's just basically um duplicate it and put it there so or maybe this part will be better what do you think yeah let's go with that one let's uh yeah it will make sense if we if we take this part so let's take it with our lasso tool again Control j if you are on a pc or you want to mark command and g j sorry and uh yeah let's put it where it should be uh, like so here okay of course we take a eraser and we erase what we don't need fabulous see how realistic it looks <laughs> fantastic okay we also have a little a stretched backdrop here what we can do with that let me see shall we go with yes let's go with this part of an image we use the selection which is around the size of, of what we are going to fix so yeah Control j always sample from the layer that you want to um have the backdrop from so in our case i'm only sampling from layer one i'm not sampling for all the layers i have already sampled because that would be just an empty selection if that makes sense okay so we go into edit transform 
flip horizontal. In that case, uh, we just have it on the other side and it's symmetrical. So let's put it here. Looks good. Command or Control T. And let's rotate it so that it matches. Fantastic. That looks good to me. Let's click Accept. And we need to match the lightness. So let's go into Adjustments, Hue Saturation. Let's click the um, <laughs> clipping mask <laughs> so that it only affects this layer that we are working on, not the rest, which is beneath. Okay, and let's do with the lightness about minus seven looks very good to me. Fantastic. With an eraser, let's erase what we don't need. Fantastic. There we go. Looks very good. Oh, and the last thing, we need to uh, fix the lightness issue here, which would be the easiest of them all, because we only need to use the burn tool. This is just a very easy tool. We set it to range mid-tones exposure 4%. And look at this. We are just going to dab it. Just, just going to dab it like that to kind of match it with what's here, right? And let's dab it with a burn tool. Fabulous! <laughs> here is here is our completed image. Let's select all our layers apart from the background one because we're going to need it for showing the before and after. So let's click this and holding shift, let's click it right till the very top and choose merge layers. Fabulous. This is the after and this is before. Let's zoom it in, so you can see. And that's all! I hope you liked this tutorial. If so, make sure you hit the like and subscribe to my channel and see you in the next one!